Good evening, Redeemer, and welcome to this, our second service in our series of Advent devotions, in which we're learning that Jesus is the descendant of Adam and Eve, of Abraham, and of Judah. Tonight's devotion focuses on the fact that he is the descendant of Abraham. These devotions are meant to be interactive. So, fathers, you will have opportunity in just a little bit to light an Advent wreath or candles if you have them, or have your children light them. You'll also have the opportunity to pull out your family Bible and read along as we read the text. You can open up your Bible to Genesis chapter 12. We'll be reading verses 1 through 7 in just a moment. We begin our devotion in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may now light your candles. Tonight, we light three candles, remembering Jesus, the light of the world, and the light of our life. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. By your word and spirit, may our souls be blessed. Amen. and peace belong to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, did you know that the average retirement age right now in the United States is about 62 years old? People who are currently working say that they hope to and plan to retire by the time they're 64. Now obviously the age at which you plan to, the age at which you will, or maybe the age at which you did retire are going to vary from these numbers, but the fact still stands that most Americans look towards their mid-60s as the age range in which they would like to retire. This just seems to be the age at which people would like to start looking back at their working life and mark it with complete. The age at which people would like to settle into their retirement home and really start enjoying the fruits of their decades of labor. Now, Abram was about a decade older than what you and I might consider retirement age. Abram was 75 years old. It seems that he had a pretty successful working life as a cattleman, and he was maybe at this point ready to hang things up, retire, and start really enjoying the fruits of his 75 years of labor. But God had a different plan in mind for Abram. At the age of 75 years old, Abram was approached by God when God told him, I want you to leave your country, leave your father's household, and go. Now you may be wondering at this point, what was Abram thinking about all of this? What did he be thinking? Why did God choose me for this task? Why wouldn't he go to some young 18-year-old man who had his whole life ahead of him, who had potential and energy and ambition on his side, why did God choose me? Now, we don't know if Abram was thinking any of these thoughts because the Bible doesn't say. What the Bible does say, though, is what Abram did. The Bible says, so Abram went. He went by faith in the promises that God had given him. 
And God had given him four main promises. He promised Abram that he was going to make him into a great nation. He promised that he was going to provide him with land, that he would make his name great, and that all nations on earth would be blessed through him. Now that first promise, that God would make him into a great nation, seems like it would have a prerequisite that Abram would have to have a few kids, if not at least one son. But at the age of 75 years old, with no children to his name, that promise looked iffy at best. But God came through with his promise, and he provided Abram with a son named Isaac, through whom Abram did become a great nation, the nation of Israel. However, God did not provide the fulfillment of that promise to Abram right away. In fact, Abram had to wait another 25 years before the birth of his son. Abram was 100 years old when God fulfilled that first promise. The second promise that God was going to give him land was also fulfilled. God led Abram to the land that he was going to give to him and to his descendants. At that time, it was called Canaan. We know it today as Israel. However, Abram did not live to see the day that his descendants inherited that land. It was going to be a few hundred years down the road before his descendants entered into the promised land and inherited it. The third promise that God was going to make Abram's name great, Abram also didn't live to see that day either. He didn't live to see the day when his name was written in the Holy Scriptures, or the day when you and I think of the name Abram or Abraham as the father of all believers, or the man who lived by faith in a Savior to come. And that Savior would come. And it's through that Savior that all nations on earth would be blessed. And this is the fulfillment of that fourth promise of God. However, Abram didn't even live to see that day either. It was another 2,000 years after the death of Abram that Jesus Christ was born. Now, even though Abram had to live, had to wait 25 years to see the fulfillment of God making him into a great nation, even though he never lived to see the day that his descendants would inherit that promised land. He never got to see the day that his name became great, and he didn't get to see that day 2,000 years later when Christ was born. Abram, that 75-year-old man, still got up and he went, and he acted in faith in God's promise. You and I today can trace the lineage from Abram all the way down to Jesus, who was born in the land that God promised to Abram. Today, you and I and all nations are blessed through that one offspring of Abram, the Savior of the world who was born on Christmas Day. And even though it has been 2,000 years since Christ was born on this earth, you and I still live by the same faith that Abram had in the Savior. However, our faith is in a Savior who came and who fulfilled the promises of and the prophecies of the Old Testament, including being born in the line of Abram. God came to Abram and told him to leave his country and his people. Abram acted in faith in God's promises. Today, you have been called to live by faith also. In this Advent season, let's keep our eyes focused on the ultimate promise that was fulfilled, the promise of a Savior who is going to come and take away the sins of the whole world, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fathers, please pick up your family Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 12 with me now. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and will, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, 
to your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the promises and prophecies that you have provided and preserved for us to read in your Old Testament. Today we especially thank you for the promise that you gave to Abram that all nations on earth would be blessed through him. This Advent season we are actively and anxiously waiting to celebrate the fulfillment of that promise in the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. In this Advent season, help us to always keep our hearts, minds, and eyes focused on that promised Savior who was to come, who came and died for the sins of the whole world. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.